every meaningful app has navigation inside of them. If you haven't watched the last tutorial, there we have spoken about how we can use push, pop, replace and many more advanced things about navigation. And in this tutorial, we want to look how we can use named routes. And if you want to develop a bigger application, then it is the right video for you because I will go into detail about how you can structure your named routes and so on. And we will build here a small application where we have a login page, a home page, and then we simply navigate between these pages with named routes. We want to start with the structure of our application. So here you see we have a splash page and a login page and also a home page. And that's what we want to create right now. Let's get started by creating a file called app routes. And here inside we put all the routes of our application inside because we want to use here named routes. We define it here at one location. And here we basically have the home screen, the splash screen and the login screen. Then we go to our main file and here inside we have our material app. And instead of this home parameter, we will remove it right now because we use some other attributes. So instead of home, you need to put here your initial route inside. And this is then a named route. So we put here our string inside and therefore I create here a new method and we return here simply our string route. And here we simply take this string, for example. All right, behind these strings, which we have created here inside, we need to establish some meaning. And therefore we have here next to the initial route, the onGenerate route. And then we create here a new method, get route, and create here this new method, get route. We have here the route settings, which we use for getting the name of the route. And the settings name is exactly later our home, for example, or our splash or our login. Here inside, we want to add for every route a different case. So we start with the splash route. And you can also set a default route and we set it right now to null. Here inside of the splash route, you simply return your splash page. So I have created here a new page in our page and splash. And here we have our splash page. And then you need to wrap the splash page around a build route. And we also put here our settings inside of this build route. And now we want to create this method. This method build route is pretty easy. We simply return here a material page route. And inside of it, we put our settings inside and also we create here this builder and then we return here our child object, which is our page. And this might be familiar to you because this is what you use for push, for example, that you also need to supply a material page route. And now everything is fine and we have here already the splash page, which is our initial route. Let's also create this for our other routes. So we create here one for our login route. We create here this method and inside of it, we put our login page. So I have created here another page of our login. And lastly, we create the last route, which we have. So here we have the home route and inside of it, we put the home page inside. And this is also another page, which I have created. Let's have right now a look at how we can navigate from one page, for example, from the splash page to the login page with our named routes. Therefore, we go to the splash page and inside of this page, we create a new button and we give it some text. And then we make here use of this navigator, which comes from the Flutter SDK. And here we call the method push named. And now we need to pass here a string inside. So we put here our login string inside, which we have here put into our app routes. And this is then for our push. So let's try it out. So we push simply to this next screen here and everything with our named route. Now we want to look at a second example where we also put some data to the new route. So we have here this button and if we click on it, then the username should get to the new page and also the password. And that's what we want to do right now. Therefore, we add here another button to our splash page and we give it here different text. So we also want to put some data inside and we call here again, like before this navigator pushed named and put here our login route inside. Next to it, we also can set some arguments and that's what we want to do. And here we want to put the arguments inside and then we create here a new field for our arguments. And here we want to create a new class with our login arguments. So we want to put here our username to this new page and also our password. Therefore, we go here to our login folder and create a new file. And this file is called login arguments. And here inside, we simply create these two arguments, the username and the password and create a constructor. That's all what we need to do here. 
And then we simply import it here on the other side and we are done. Then we go to our main page and here we go to our login route which should get all of these arguments here inside. For our login route here we create these arguments, our login arguments and we get them by settings.arguments and here we get the login arguments and later if we put here the same line at our splash level then we simply rename it to splash arguments. All right, here we have the login arguments and then you simply put them into your page. So we call here the arguments which we want to create and then we put here our login arguments inside. So let's go to our login page and here we simply create our login arguments and we also create a constructor. And that's all what we need to do here. And then we go here to the bottom to our build method. And here inside of this build method, we create two text widgets. The first one shows our username and we get our username from our arguments. So inside of these arguments, we have username and password. And that's what we want to access here right now. And therefore we make here use of the string interpolation. So make sure that you have here this dollar sign and then some brackets around. And then you can simply put here your object inside. We also give it some text style and then we also do the same thing for our password, only that we this time put here our password inside. And now we can try this example out. So every time if we click here on push login data, then we execute here this, where we put our arguments to our route. And this will then go here to our main page and our main page will then here get these arguments and put it to our login page. And here inside, we simply then display these arguments inside. And if I click here on this button, you see that we have here our username and password and this was transferred from the first page to the second page. If you want to go from your login page back to your splash screen, we simply therefore create a new button and here we want to pop to the previous screen. So we simply call navigator.pop and put here our context inside. And this looks then like this. So we have here our button and if we click here, then we are going back to our splash page. Let's look at the next example here at our page. So we have here also a replace button and with this one we can then replace a route and here we want to simply replace it with the home route so that we are not able to go back here if we are logged in already. Therefore we go here again to our login page to our build method and here inside we create this button replace and here inside we call the navigator push named and remove until which we have also looked at in the last video and here we put our context inside and also the app routes home because we want to go to this page home. After it we call here this model route with named and here we simply tell Flutter that they should pop every route and then they simply put our home route on the stack. And instead of this home route, you can also choose other routes. So maybe you want to pop until a specific route. So you want to keep some of the pages in the stack, then you can choose here your route simply. We will go here with our slash. And this time we also want to put here inside some arguments. So I call here this arguments and there we want to pass in some home arguments. So basically after you have logged in, you get some user token and this is then what you put here inside. And now we want to create also this home arguments. So inside of our page home directory, I create this home arguments and here inside I put this user token and the constructor inside. And then you also need to import here this home arguments inside of the login page. From here we go then again to our main page and here inside of our home route we get then these arguments which we have passed in before. So we get here these settings.arguments and transferred to home arguments and then we put them here inside of our home page, these arguments inside like we also did here before. Then we go again to our home page and here inside you create first of all this home arguments and then you also create the constructor. Then we go to our build method and here inside we put then our user token inside as a text widget and here we put then our arguments user token inside. So in this case we have here only one argument and this is what we then display here on our home page. Let's also put the text style inside and that's all what we need to do here. Let's try this button replace right now out. So here basically 
we first of all put the home arguments inside our user token and this goes here into our arguments. Then it goes here into our main and here basically we get the arguments and then we simply put the arguments inside of our home page and the home page is then simply displaying this user token. So if I click on this button, you see that we get here this user token and it is simply displayed in our home page. And here on this home page, you see that we have no back button anymore because what we did here before on our login page is that we called here this push named and remove until. So every page under this was removed and we have only the home page on our navigation stack. Now we want to put here also a lockout button inside. So I put here this button widget inside and I call here this replace lockout. And we want to simply go to our splash screen again. And therefore we call here again our navigator push named and remove until. And here inside we put the page inside to which we want to go. So we want to go to the splash screen. And then we put here also that every route should be popped from the screen. And in this case, only the home page will be popped. Let's try this example also out. I click here on the replace splash and then you see that we are locked out again and we are back here at our splash page. Now we want to add here also another case where we have a guest login. And by the way, if you want to get this whole source code of this app, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get my Flutter course where I teach you how you can become a more advanced Flutter developer. So basically what we want to do here is to click here on this home button and then it is simply going to the home page and in this case we have no user token and then we can also log out again. Therefore we create here on our splash page another button and here we call it replace or our guest mode and here we simply create the functionality. So we go here and call navigator push named and remove until and here we simply put our home route inside. So we want to go to the home route and as the arguments, we don't put here anything inside. So we don't supply here our arguments, which we could set. Instead, we go to our main file and look up here our home route. And here inside, I want to show you two types of navigation. The first one is where you need to set some arguments and the other one where you can set arguments, but you don't need to. At our home, we want to have the second case so that you can optionally put your arguments inside. So we simply create here a new field default arguments. And here we simply call our home arguments with the user token null. And in case of that our settings arguments are null, then we want to return our default arguments. So we simply return here these arguments with the user token null. And basically we are calling here this home route two times. One time we have set the arguments and one time we didn't set the arguments. So in the splash page, we have here that we have no arguments here inside. And on our login page, we also go to the home route, but here we have set the arguments. And in this case here, both should work. So let's try it out. So we have here our home button and if we click here on home, then the default arguments will be passed here inside because we have not supplied any arguments. And for the other case, if we are going here to our login page and then we go here again to home, this time we put here these arguments inside, which you see here. So we put our real user token inside and this also works fine. And this time we have here then this user token displayed inside. Now we want to look also at a mandatory route. So you need to put the arguments inside and therefore we use here this login route. Here inside we want to check if the arguments are null and in the case that our arguments are not supplied, then we want to return here an exception. You can also put here another route inside, which is for example, an error route or something. So you create simply a route and put here your error page inside. And this is what you can also put here inside. However, I set here this exception inside because then the developer who goes to this login page sees that he needs to put some arguments inside and that he cannot do it without arguments. Let's try both of these cases out. So the first case is where we set no arguments, then we should get this exception. And if we set arguments, then we should go to the login page. And in our splash page, we have 
already these two buttons. So here we have one button with where we set our argument, which is this data. And here we have another button where we don't set our arguments. And this is then here this no data. And both of them we have already implemented in the beginning. So here we set some arguments and here we don't have this arguments attribute here at the bottom, which you have here. Like we saw before, this button, if we set the arguments, is fine. However, if we click here on this no data or if we don't pass any arguments here inside, then we get here this exception. And this exception simply says an error, no login arguments. And basically, this is exactly the exception which we have defined here. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!